Because we're doing this on the internet, um, I'm doing the entire presentation using Kickstarter.com. This way, all those questions they usually get about, hey, can we get your slides? Um, not necessary. I'm using the website. So I hope you guys have all spent some time with uh, Kickstarter, either browsing projects or backing projects. If you are in the room and are considering um, running your own project, I highly recommend backing a few and getting, you know, getting used to what that experience feels like, looking at videos, reading through project descriptions, looking at rewards, seeing what really um, jumps out at you, what seems novel. So, I mean, this is what I do every day. I've been at Kickstarter for two years now. Um, oh, I should show you this is who I am. So, um, slash Stephanie. Um, and I would say the thing that I learned the absolute most about Kickstarter from is just browsing projects. Even tonight as I was getting ready, and I'm logged in, it doesn't usually look like this. Um, even tonight as I was getting ready for um, the talk, I was learning so much. I would be emailing people. I was like, hey, have you seen this project, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I can't uh, recommend this enough. So this is my profile page on Kickstarter. Uh, this is where I curate projects I think are really exciting. Um, and then you can also see projects that have been successfully funded. And I kind of write little blurbs about why I think they're cool. So um, this is the start page of Kickstarter. And um, it's a pretty exciting page. It's newly launched. It is uh, a place that we're hoping that people will come to, feel inspired, be able to figure out a little bit more about what we are and what really matters on Kickstarter. So you can, if you have a category, like let's say you're an artist, you can click any of these things and learn a little bit more about art, for example, on Kickstarter. Um, and then also a little bit more about how we see the website. So uh, we love to talk about Kickstarter as a vibrant ecosystem, a space where people not only come to create things, but also to support things they're excited about. Um, it's all about the people. It's about the project creators and the people who back projects. So look at these numbers. 4.9 million people have backed a project on Kickstarter. Nearly a million and a half have pledged to more than one project. 147,000 plus have pledged to more than 10. So these are really huge numbers. Um, also, this is cool, over 7,000 projects have been funded near me in New York. So it also shows you a local view of what that looks like. Um, something we think is really important for people to take away when they're doing Kickstarter projects is that it's not just about raising money, right? Because at the end of the day, the money is spent. You built the thing. It's out in the world. It's about the community that you build, um, both before you launch your Kickstarter project, through your project, and then after it's done. These are the people um, that you're going to uh, build relationships with, that are going to be your champions, that are going to tell other people about your work. Um, and there's been a million fantastic ways this is, we've seen this happen. So we made, uh, as part of our new start page, we made this sweet little tour, which gives you a sense of what it is to build a project on Kickstarter. So the screenshot here is what project build looks like. If any of you haven't yet, and we'll do it in a little bit, um, if you haven't yet clicked the start button on Kickstarter, I highly recommend it. Um, it it'll just take you right into the guidelines, and you read them, acknowledge them, and then you can start working on a project. It could be a project that you never launch. It could just be a space that you mess around with ideas that you could share with friends. So one thing that we've added to that is this idea of getting feedback. So you can add a preview link to your project once it's a suitable draft form, and you can get feedback from other people on your idea. So in this little mock-up we've created here, it's for an imaginary journal project, and we have people talking about the project page. Once you've gotten feedback, you think it's in a good space, uh, you share it with the world, right? So uh, here you have a mock-up of what it looks like using our iPhone app um, and what it's like for the world to be excited about what you're up to. You can also use our app uh, to track your funding progress as well as um, our website. And again, I'll show you what that looks like in real time in just a second. Um, and then, of course, your project gets funded. But after your project is funded, it's not the end of the story. This is where you start telling people about the thing you're working on. So this is where that community that you're building and that you've built it really comes into play. This is where you really invite them into your creative process. So this is using something we call project updates. We talk about this as the, um, the creative process in your inbox. And the way it works is once somebody has pledged a single dollar to your project, they are automatically subscribed um, to your project. So it's a great way to stay in touch with people. 
And then we also have ways for you to um, manage all those incredible backers, all those incredible people that are supporting your work. So this is the backer report. Ooh, something is ringing. Is anyone else here ringing? No? Shake your heads. I can see you. I can't hear you. I don't know what's ringing. <laughs> Okay, I'm just going to keep going. Sorry, sorry we, uh, we, we muted you again, or muted ourselves. Okay, I don't, did you guys hear ringing? <laughs> no. All right, I don't know. Maybe somebody else was trying to call me. Um, cool. Um, all right, so rewards. So this is the way that you can get in touch with people. The screenshot here is the back of report. And again, I'll show you a better look at the tools in just a second. Um, but this is a way that you can keep in touch with all the people that are excited about your project, both delivering their rewards, um, but also managing all their information. And then, of course, the best and most exciting thing about Kickstarter is you get to make something. So this is that, that journal, that thing that you started all the way back in the build, sharing with your friends um, in real life. So um, we have a few things that we know about Kickstarter to be true. Um, and things that are absolutely unchangeable on the platform. Number one, Kickstarter is a space for creative projects. So on that first um, homepage I showed you here, uh, you can see it lists out those 13 categories right here on the right side. These, if it fits in one of these categories, we'll call it creative. We're really, 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 really broad in how we define creative, but we do ask that it fits in one of those categories. Um, second, it's for projects. So something specific and finite, something that you can point to and say, ta-da, it's done. Um, another thing that's important to keep in mind about Kickstarter is that we have an all-or-nothing funding model, which means that if you want to make a book or a new film or, um, a, I don't know, put out a play, uh, you have to figure out how much money you need to raise to realize that project and then uh, set your funding goal and we'll take a look at some projects and how they did that and achieve that goal by the time your time runs out. So if you don't achieve that goal, you don't get to keep any of the money that you that people pledge to you. This is really key to the way Kickstarter works. We think that Kickstarter is a place for funding projects, for making things happen. It's not a tip jar where people sort of are kicking some money your way and saying, yeah, that's cool, I'd like to see that happen. So a little less than half of all projects do reach their goal in Kickstarter. I know it seems scary, this idea of the all or nothing funding model, but it's really important. Um, so that's some of the key ideas. There's a lot more FAQs here, um, which we're not going to go over, but I implore you, you should. These are important things. These are questions I get all the time. Maybe I'll get them later at the end of this talk. Um, but I want to start looking at some other things. So uh, really quickly, just to impress upon you, how, what a, we talked about the idea of an ecosystem earlier, a creative ecosystem. Our, this is a really big ecosystem. So over $800 million has been pledged to projects on Kickstarter. Nearly 50,000 projects have been successfully funded. So that awesome story that Daniel told earlier, that's just one of 50,000 incredible, amazing stories, right? Um, and here are those backer numbers again. We think those are really important. This is our live stats page that I have open here. It's easy to get to by just clicking this Help button and then clicking Stats. You can always see what the stats are. Wait, actually, before I click away, there's also more drill down information. So you should check that out. Um, so the help, this is the help page. Um, this is where you can access our FAQ. It's really good. So for instance, I was doing this earlier. We recently launched in Canada. Um, and someone was asking me questions about the Canadian launch and how it was different than America. So I simply typed in Canada. And it gave me all the articles with Canada. And then I can click CL7 results. And I could get everything to do with Canada in our FAQ. Um, so similarly, if you have a general question about how Kickstarter works, I would suggest coming here first. Um, we also have this thing called Kickstarter School, um, which is basically what we're doing tonight, which is sort of an intro to Kickstarter, how it works. It gives you a chapter-by-chapter -chapter view of how to think about creating your project. So first would be defining your project, then it's creating your rewards, how to set a goal, how to think about setting your goal, how to make a video, um, thinking about project build. This is a thing that you don't usually see until you get started. Um, project updates, reward fulfillment. So there's a lot of great content in here. Um, and, but like I said, we're basically doing it tonight. Um, and then really important, our guideline. So like I said, the most important guideline for Kickstarter is creative projects. As long as it fits in one of our categories and it is a project, we're cool with it. 
Um, that said, uh, you know, to be um, secure in this day and age, we usually have to have some other things to keep in mind. So we have some things that can't be offered as a reward. And then we have additional guidelines for hardware and product design. So I know that's not what we're talking about tonight, so I'm not going to get into it too deep. And then we also have community guidelines, and this is about having Kickstarter as a healthy space on the internet. Um, and then I want to take you to our blog. So our blog is a place where we share news and information, where we um, share position pieces. This is how we feel about something. Um, this is a great place to get a sense of who we are and how we think about things. Um, so you can see we're really excited about Canada. Two different posts. <laughs> um, but I want to, let's see, better tools for project creators. So this is a blog post we wrote about. We recently updated some of our tools. So the backer report is that thing I was talking about earlier. This is the way that you can keep track of all the people that pledged to your project. So just a quick tour of what those tools look like. And then, like I said, this is on our blog. You can find it yourself. Um, uh, you can see you can search by all backers, people who responded to your survey, people who have not responded, who you sent rewards to, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you can also just type in people's names. You can see that there's a messaging system built in. You can keep in touch with people directly through this backer interface. Also, once a project has been successfully funded, you could send a survey out. So this is an example of what that survey looks like. So this is a way that if your project is successfully funded and you want to get rewards out to people, this is how you get the information from them so that you can mail them the stuff, so you can figure out what t-shirt size they are, whatever that is. Um, and this is a close-up look of what it, a backer card looks like on your project. And this is your funding uh, dashboard. So while your project is live, I hear from creators over and over again, this is the place you're like obsessively checking. So this is showing you your funding progress. A new dot is added every day, showing you how you're doing and reaching your goal. Uh, you can get a sense of where your referrers are coming from. Gray represents off of Kickstarter. Green represents on. Um, most typically, you're going to see direct traffic in Facebook as being your number one and two refers for your project. This is an important thing to understand. Um, and this is really a typical breakdown where the majority of your support is going to come from off of the Kickstarter website. Hey, my name is Ross Taylor. I'm uh, in the Multimedia Photography and Design Department. I'm getting a master's degree. So I have a question about um, any advice that you may have for driving traffic to a Kickstarter farm outside of Facebook and personal connections? One thing that's important to remember about social media is the reason it's so valuable, the reason it drives so much traffic is because if you are sharing content that people are excited about, they will take that story and share it on your behalf. So the, the sort of image I always recommend that people think about and keep in mind is think about your daily life on the internet. Where do you get your news? Where do you get your information? What kind of content are people sharing with you? Um, most, like, I get most of my content on Twitter and on Facebook. Um, it's usually saying, hey, I found this incredible documentary film, or check out this cool photo. It's rarely pleas for funding, which is important to keep in mind, right? Oh, I have a question. Okay. Um, my name is Amanda Quick. I'm a senior here at Syracuse. And my question is, you kind of talked about the all or nothing sort of model. Can you talk a little bit about how to like, estimate um, how much to ask for so that you can make your goal, but that you don't overshoot or undershoot? You can always raise more than you ask for, but never less. So when I usually am advising people to set a funding goal, I tell you to consider two things. One is the size of your network, the people that who are in your life, the people that you're connected with. Because it is, these, do, these people are important. They are the people that are going to give your project momentum and are going to share your project on your behalf and get the word out. Um, and those are the people you can usually count on. Uh, and then after that, you want to think about what it is you're trying to achieve and the minimum amount of money you need to raise in order to achieve that. So the most projects, and um, I'm sorry, I lost the slide somewhere. Um, most projects raise between one and ten thousand dollars. Oh, I know where it is. I can show you. Um, it was on that stats page, which I skipped over. Let me go back to screen share. And Sarah, I can finish answering your question. I'm sorry that that got lost. Um, hang on one sec. All right. So you guys are now looking at my screen, right? So if you go to successfully funded projects on this page. 
you can see this number here, 31,846. That's people who have raised between one and ten thousand dollars. This represents something like seventy-five percent of all projects on Kickstarter. So some of the projects I'm going to show you, projects you hear about in the news, they're raising between ten and twenty thousand. They're maybe raising over twenty thousand, but really most people are in this one to ten thousand dollar range. This is a very human scale. This is, represents the size of our networks, I think, pretty pretty well. Um, so sort of follow up on that question you had about how do you get the word out. It is really important when you're setting your goal to consider your network. But with something like a documentary film or something with documentary subject matter, um, you do have the opportunity that you have some content specific information, things that might, people might be excited about. So if you're making a documentary about war veterans, for instance, there are advocacy groups, there are people who write stories about war veterans, there's, um, there's networks of veterans. There's other photojournalists or other filmmakers. So there's people who are excited to tell the story of the content of your project. Um, and I would recommend your outreach should be focused on that. So that's what I meant about um, the internet is rarely, and to use Sharice chatted what I said, rarely pleased for funding. It's not people asking for money. It's people sharing stories of creative work. So if you want to get beyond your own network, I would think strategically about the thing you're trying to make, and then the content that people might be excited about hearing about and sharing on your behalf. So we're in the Discover section of Kickstarter. Um, this is a great place to find out about new projects. Uh, this, at the very top here is Staff Picks. Next up is Popular This Week. So you have two rows devoted to Popular. This is things that people are excited about. Staff Picks recommend, uh, represents exactly what it sounds like, projects that the staff here at Kickstarter are excited about. Um, then we also have recently successfully funded. And then we also share some updates that we've seen that we think are pretty cool. So again, updates are the way that people keep people engaged in their communities, right? So I, whenever I'm talking to people who want to make projects, I, I recommend checking out the staff pick section. I think it's a great way to sort of see, um, like I said, here at Kickstarter, we look at thousands of projects all the time. Um, so we have a pretty good sense of what's good, what's nice and doing well and what's doing a good job at um, talking to a community. So this is a good place to uh, browse. You can also browse by um, those things I just highlighted as well as projects that are ending soon. Small projects, this is $1,000 or less. Um, most funded and then our curated pages, which Newhouse has one. Um, you can also browse by category. So if we're going to look at, just to focus on journalism, since I know this is a big topic for us tonight, um, if you click publishing, you can drill down. You can see everything in the publishing category, but you can also drill down and see um, things in journalism, nonfiction, periodical, radio and podcast. These are going to be categories that I imagine you all would be interested in checking out. Um, it's certainly um, photography and film as well for, for the documentary angle. We see, we see a lot of that across these things. So I highlighted, um, I went into the staff pick section of uh, those categories, and I highlighted a few projects that I think are really great that are worth looking at for ideas on how to run your own project. So this is a project that launched on September 16th. It has a couple weeks left to go, so we're about halfway through. It had a $5,000 goal, totally reasonable. Um, it has now 313 backers. For that question about funding goals earlier, you can see that they are overfunded. They now have over $9,000 pledged. What that means is they're going to be um, able to produce the thing they said they were going to do. They may have some money left over to do something better, but most of that money, and this is really key for those of you new to Kickstarter, most of that money is going to go into this rewards production thing. So um, if you're not familiar with Kickstarter and the way it works, I'm going to just zoom in a little. Um, these are the rewards. So this is the video is the way you invite someone into your project. The rewards are the way that they participate, right? So starting at $5, you get a digital edition of the supplement. So this is a proposal to write a booklet that is a collaboration between a magazine and the Chicago Teachers Union. This is a great example of how to do a, a modest project, a $5,000 project. You have the sort of expertise and wisdom and advocacy goals of the teachers union along with uh, the magazine, which has a long history of producing work like this. So the rewards are to get a digital copy of it, 
ten dollars. Uh, you get a print copy to hold and admire. I really like the copy here. This is a really thoughtful copy in the writing. Um, for twenty-five dollars, and this is their most. Uh, no, sorry, the most popular is the thing itself for one hundred twelve backers. Second most is plus a paperback copy of a book that's about to come out. So it's a pretty amazing thing. They're pre-selling um, a book. Um, a, relative a relevant book, and they're also selling the supplement that they've written. They also have a year-long subscription to Jacobin, which is the collaborator on the project. And then they have these incredible photographs that they feature throughout the project. You can see them here. So they also have a limited edition photo series. So this is a great way to sort of take an idea, um, which is a color booklet on neoliberal education reform, and think about how to work as collaborators and structure rewards around that. This project has been successful since nearly day one, um, so I think it's a really great project for folks to look at. One reason I like this project so much is because there aren't, this isn't about producing a lot of swag or additional things um, that have nothing to do with the core project itself. So the $5 level and the $10 level are exclusively about the project, and that is what most people are backing for. So you have 136 people backing for the, the booklet. Um, the $25 level is this book that's about to come out. Um, it's, it's been published by Jacobin. So the publishers of this booklet are also making this book. This is related to the content here. Um, subscription to Jacobin. So they're selling subscriptions to their magazine. So that makes sense as well. Um, and then this photo series is something that's going to be included as part of the, the work that they're doing for the booklet. So you can see this, the photos have already been taken. So this, I think this is a literally one of the best examples of a project I've seen um, in the journalism area on Kickstarter for this reason. And we're going to look at some examples, in fact, um, of projects that use, have a lot of swag rewards. Um, which, Dan, as you said, they might regret, regret promising. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so I can even Isn't that also a, sometimes an issue with uh, if you get a lot of international backers and you have to send physical products to them? It is. Um, and I, let's see how uh, this project has handled it. We have, so here you can see, um, I can't actually see what you guys are seeing right now. Hang on one second. Let me just see something. Okay, so I have I've masked over the ten dollar reward. At the very bottom there, it says add five dollars U.S. to ship outside the U.S. So you can set international shipping. So the next one for twenty five dollars, it says add ten dollars to ship outside the U.S. So you can add an international shipping rate on top of any of the rewards that you're shipping. So my question is: Is it possible to have a maximum? Contribution. So, if I don't want anybody giving more than ten dollars, can you set that, or is it freely available for people to contribute whatever they choose? Um, you can set a ten dollar reward tier and nothing else. I can give you an example of what that looks like. Uh, give me one sec. Um, um, this is Max. There you are. So, this is a project by a multi-time. Uh, Kickstarter project creator. Um, he is a real proponent of the idea of <laughs> limiting your project to one or two rewards. Um, so you can see he only has one reward here. It's for ten dollars, and it's just for the cards that he's making. Right, but ju just just to see that? I can see it. Just to confirm that, so you can reward. But any. But people can give, people right. can pledge whatever they want. <coughs> but likely, you know, I, I don't know how many people pledged over right. ten dollars for this in this case. What is your use case? Why would you want? Let's say someone wanted to give you a hundred dollars. What would you? What are you? Talk through this with me. Um. Well. Uh, I, I don't know if it's worthy of sharing. I'm trying to get a speaker to come, and I'm trying to get money. Um, and so I don't think that it is viable to ask students for money. Um, but I was just kind of toying with the idea, in which case I wouldn't want them anybody giving more than 10 bucks if I was to ask the students. Obviously, it's not, that's not the goal. The goal is to arrange for the money to be drawn from other departments. And, you know, I'm talking to a bunch of blah, 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 blah. But that was what crossed my mind. That's sure. All. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, there's no, um, no limit 
in that way. This right. Is the, this is the closest thing you have to a limit. You can also um, at any time mark a reward tier as sold out. So it's a way to shut down your project, sort of, ostensibly, to sort of say, all right, no more pledging. But people can still actually pledge until the clock runs down. OK. Yeah. Thank you. Sure, you're welcome. Hey, Stephanie, we actually have some questions coming in from Twitter. Great. So I'll read one of them here. Um, this is from Aaron, who's at 34 Reds. His question is, does Kickstarter help find resources to help develop your idea, or is it only used for funding? Kickstarter is a funding platform for creative projects. That's it. Um, this is a project that came across tonight. You can see it's ending in two hours in planning for this talk. Um, they have uh, a $500 goal. They have 21 people uh, pledged for $875. Um, it's an incredible project. It's a guy who wants to digitize um, this music magazine that his dad was the editor of. So they've already been doing the work um, with the, some of the copies they have. They've been spending about 15, 20 bucks an issue. Um, they're basically trying to raise money to digitize as many issues as they can. One of the incredible things that's happened through this project, I've learned through reading the updates, is that um, you can click over to their project updates, is that they, they were funded pretty early, so they've been able to continue right away just with the work. And then uh, people have been coming forward with copies with issues that they did not have. So they listed on their project page, they listed the complete uh, library that they had. So there, you can see they're missing volume one, number four. Someone came forward and said, oh, I have that one, or something like that. So that's a pretty amazing thing that also happened. So this is this idea of community we talk a lot about on Kickstarter. Um, also incredible rewards, which is basically, this is a digitization pro uh, project. They just want to get this content online. So um, they're basically saying, um, we're going to send you as much as we can um, in exchange for your support. So a great small project to check out, a way to rally a very personal community. Uh, this is from a successful independent radio producer. She's sort of in her spare time, ad hoc, has been producing this radio show. Um, she wants to kind of get serious about it, so she made a proposal to do some, get some actual funding to do an actual uh, radio show. Um, through this project, it's been pretty incredible. She has got these incredible testimonials from other radio people. Um, she's gotten some sponsorships, some challenge grants. People are saying, you know, if you can get more um, pledges for this project, we will come in and match every dollar pledge. So she's been really strategic and thoughtful on how to raise money. So it's not just her money coming in. So for her $5,000 level, she offered up a season sponsorship that went within the first week or so. Um, she also has people sponsoring episodes. And she's been sharing all that information in her project updates. Um, <laughs> so this project is kind of incredible, um, sponsored by the uh, Center for Investigative Research, which is at the University of Missouri. That's what I was trying to remember. And this is a great example of how you can come um, to a project with some supporters already lined up. So they had two things going here. One is that the university was matching contributions up to $15,000 which was really to get the public launch on top of the money they were getting here. And they also had um, their grantee, the Knight Foundation, was offering an additional $10,000 grant if they got to 2,000 backers. And not only that, they're also a nonprofit. So they're also able to offer um, tax deductions for support with this project. So this is a great story to look at. You can see they crossed that $2,000 mark. So they did get that grant from the Knight Foundation. Um, and they did. Here's a look at their. Oops, here's a look at their project updates. I can click you. Um, they did. So to that gentleman's question earlier about how do you get the word out beyond your own community? So they did things like this, where they had um, these on-air talks with people working in the space, talking about the importance of a project like this. Um, they did a few of these. They also included in all their updates this really adorable mascot that they made, which was the FOIA machine. Um, so here's another call that they did and another adorable mascot shot. So they were keeping it human. They were keeping it real. But they were also keeping it really serious. They were sending out important information like this. Your, your donation is tax deductible. 
Um, so this is a great example of um, a multi-institutional supported um, project on Kickstarter. So we talked a little bit earlier. Um, Dan raised a great point about making swag and making promises maybe uh, that you're going to regret later. So I will say, with a lot of these free internet journalism radio projects, we see a lot of um, stuff like this, a magnet for $15, or a, st a stress reliever, or a tote bag. Um, I think with a project like this one, which is um, like the, the FOIA thing, um, which is sort of like a, it has a cute mascot, but it's also sort of a rite of passage to say that you supported this and helped to make an incredible thing like this happen. I actually am not totally against the idea of swag. I think it's you know a sort of time-honored way of raising money. Um, just sort of know what you're getting into. Absolutely, price all that stuff out. Um, make sure that you're not spending more money on rewards than you are on your project itself. Make sure you're pricing things appropriately. Uh, stuff like that. So one example I wanted to show you. This was for a magazine called Howler. It was a soccer and design magazine. This was their, this is a picture of their very low level reward. Let's see, what was it? For $5. So it's a cut and fold paper doll. Um, I also like, again, I can't emphasize enough the copy here. We'll send you a cut and fold paper doll of Wayne Rooney or Clint Dempsey or favorite scouser and scowler, respectively. So this is like soccer insider language. These are players that, you know, they knew people would be excited about. I don't know anything about soccer, so it's meaningless to me. But point being is they're speaking directly to a community. They know who they are and they know what they like, right? Um, this is an example of a favorite sort of independent radio project of mine. Um, I'm also going to raise it because Roman, the guy behind it, uh, who w worked with PRX, the Public Radio Exchange, on this project, spoke really openly about how he had regrets about his rewards. So he had... Um, where I think through field notes it had a $15 notebook and then a, a $30 three pack. And he did this incredible thing where he invited designers to make these designs based on different episodes of his radio show. So from episode 29, a designer created this design. Um, this was some designs you know, uh, that uh, this designer came up with. It's Andy Mangold, by the way, uh, for some of the other episodes. So this is like, if you have to do swag, again, this is a great way to do it. His audience is designers, people who care about this stuff, people were super excited about it. The Roman did say, after the fact, um, he did have some regrets about all this swag he promised people. And he came out of the traditional public, uh, public radio fundraising world, so I think his brain immediately went here, and he's obviously really good at coming up with stuff like this. I love this book on tape reward. It's incredible. He said in a panel he and I did together, he didn't think anyone would back for it, and people did. Um, uh, but he also had underwriting spots and a whole bunch of other things. So a great way. I think when you're making something you're giving away for free, it's something to keep in mind. To that question earlier about can you limit what people pledge, the answer, the short answer is no. People can pledge anywhere between one and $10,000. Um, but you can structure it. So in this example, which is a project by Planet Money, they had one single $25 reward. Over 20,000 people pledged for it, and it was a t-shirt that would tell the story of its own making. So the idea was, was that um, literally the t-shirt that you're pledging for, by pledging for it, you're going to get to follow along as the t-shirt is made, and they're going to create a piece of investigative journalism on how t-shirts are made and thinking about the global economy. Um, through this project that was funded by this project, and at the end of it, you would get the t-shirt that was made. So by following along on these updates, as well as on the radio show, uh, you can see how that t-shirt was made, which I think is pretty brilliant. I uh, just wanted to show you this project really quickly to show you that people do, if you have communities, let's say you have, in this case, this is the story of Japanese game developers. Um, in addition to his own online community, he knew that there would be a lot of people who speak and read Japanese, so he did translate the page into Japanese. Um, final point I would like to make here is narratively, their $10 reward, help out our project get off, sorry, help get our project off the ground by becoming a launcher. You'll play a pivotal role in our editorial process by voting on themes, which we'll focus on in upcoming weeks, and then matter, um, very successful projects. For $10, um, you would get the first three stories for free, as well as a quote-unquote shout-out. But then for 25, 944 people, this is the most popular reward, was join our editorial board. 
So um, it's an experiment, much like this Hangout. Um, but it was uh, this idea that the people who brought this project to life would help influence the content created through it. 